Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Initiative Order, and thank you so much for tuning in to Fallout Rogue Radio. Uh, chat, please let me know how the audio levels are sounding. It's our first stream, so uh, if things are a little bit off, just let me know, and I will make adjustments as needed. Uh, but welcome in. My name is Nate Ridenauer. I will be your overseer for this journey into the wastes. Uh, and before we dive on into our story, let's go ahead and meet our wonderful cast, starting off with April. Hey everybody! I finally get to be a player. I'm so excited. Uh, yes, my name is April Hill. Uh, I um, and you said we are introducing our characters, or no? Okay. Yeah, you can introduce your character name if you want to say who or what your character is, by all means, or you can wait That's until right. uh, we get to right the after. Episode. Okay, it's entirely up to you. Okay. Uh, uh, anyway, so yes, um, uh, April Hill. You can find me at Stiletto underscore Assassin on Instagram and Stiletto DM on Twitter. Uh, and stiletto underscore assassin on TikTok. It's a thing now. So exciting. Um, but yeah, so tonight I am playing Ruby Rocket. She's a, um, she's something. <laughs> she's got three eyes and she floats around. Yep. Yeah. yeah you'll, you'll see. You'll see. All right. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, let's throw over toward the man, the myth, the legend, the individual who got me into tabletop games those many, many years ago, close to a decade, a decade. I can talk, I know words. Uh, Jake, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your character for us. What, what an intro. Do me I the know. PayPal, you the $20 now or later. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, I am Jake, I'm also known as the Rizzo GP, where you can find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, and Twitch on twitch.tv slash the Rizzo GP. And I'll be playing Tanya, Tanya, is a force to be reckoned with in one form or another. So um, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Love, Tanya. Thank you so much. And uh, let's take it on down to Justin Town. Justin. All right. Uh, I'm Justin. I'm going to be playing uh, Zenon Jones, uh, Wastelander, Survivor, and Sniper. Maybe you'll see him, maybe you won't. Who knows? Things might happen. Thank you so much. Uh, let's throw over to uh, to Logan, please. Hello, my name is Logan Bose, and tonight I will be playing Doc Hawthorne. He's just a friendly old trader man. Nothing to worry about. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, y'all are totally normal people here, right? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and just last... making our way through life in the wasteland. It's fine. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, the lovely Rose, please. Hello, I'm Rose. I go by Ghost Adventures on Twitter and on Twitch. That's Ghost Adventures with a Q. Not a G. I am still not Zach Baggins. Um, but I will be Darby Walker. Um, 
as far as you know, she's not going to be doing a whole lot of walking, but um, we'll see why. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Uh, and as for myself, I'm Nate. I will be your overseer for this journey. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into our story. War. War never changes. 2077, a wonderful year to be alive. Nuclear power was used to power all the homes, all the cars, uh, all the weapons, everything you can think of within the world. It was a beautiful time, clean energy. Homes were filled with these amazing robotic individuals who could help out with everyday life. Everything from cooking, cleaning, uh, laundry, helping out with infants, and everything in between. But unfortunately, humans will be humans. And the world superpowers are once again at odds with each other. From the invasion of Alaska, to the annex of Canada, to the Commonwealth of Europe collapsing in on itself, resulting in the loss of countless lives. Everything coming to a massive climax when the bombs fell. Within just a couple hours, most of the war, most of the uh, world was reduced to piles of cinder. Very few surviving. Because the one constant in life is that war never changes. But enough about the past. The stream oh, drops it, it too. Like yep, it's it gone. <laughs> every time, no matter Happened what. Happened to my streams <laughs> every single time. 2281, we head to the Northwest Commonwealth, uh, specifically that of Southern Oregon. Uh, a beautiful mountainous state filled with luscious forests as far as the eye can see. In the couple centuries that have passed since the bombs fell, uh, a lot of nature has come back, reclaiming its former glory. However, there are still quite a few settlements that stand. Uh, some of the sturdier buildings uh, act as homes for the humans who came together to start to rebuild uh, the world itself from the devastation. And it is in the Northwest Commonwealth that we have this massive trade route running uh, from all the way up into Canada, all the way down to the most southern parts of California. The old Interstate 5, a perfect route for travelers, traders. Uh, it can be treacherous at times, as it's easy for a lot of raiders to begin picking off unsuspecting individuals. However, it is along this route that we see a couple humanoids walking along, uh, escorting what appears to be this massive bovine-looking creature that's got two heads uh, not a lot of fur left on this thing as it's currently meandering along. Uh, this creature seems to have all these different packs kind of tied down to it, all this different gear, uh, and just a massive mountain of different goods. And walking alongside of this bovine creature, let's go ahead and start off with Doc. Would you please describe who it is we see walking down the interstate? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Doc... He wears a big, heavy, old leather trench coat. Uh, he's been wearing it for as long as most people can remember. There's all kinds of stories about Doc up and down the trade route. People say he used to be a raider. People say all kinds of things. People like to talk. But mostly, Doc deals in junk. Now, Doc's kind of a nickname, you see, because he can fix just about everything except you. He's an old man little taller and normal, salt and pepper hair down past his shoulders, usually tied up in a ponytail. Currently has a uh, rattan cowboy hat and a pair of broken spectacles on his face. And he likes to say uh, he can't see worth anything, but Doc likes to talk too. Excellent, thank you so that much. And as you're moving along the interstate, uh, with your Brahmin packed full of uh, the many different things you've collected on your journey. 
Uh, you have one companion currently with you, uh, and that of Tanya. Tanya, would you please describe who it is we see walking <clears throat> with Doc? Yeah, um, Tanya, super mutant. Um, very large, again, green skin, numerous scars, both um, inflicted, maybe also self-inflicted from cauterizing a wound or um, doing super mutant things. Um, on their back is a super sledge that only gets used every once in a while. Most of the time, they're usually also carrying other um, weapons, just in case, standard uh, machete, bats, knuckles, and on the occasion, a minigun. And that's what you see. Your normal super mutant uh, stuff going mm. on. All right. Uh, as you and Doc are meandering your way down Interstate 5, uh, you begin to see just up in the distance uh, what appears to be this massive wall that uh, looks to be made of uh, kind of just massive chunks of concrete that have kind of been tied together in one way or another, uh, kind of being used to hold up what looks to be giant metal sheets of some kind, uh, forming just this massive wall that appears to go on for a couple miles in either direction. Uh, looking towards the top of the wall, you can see that it's uh, wrapped in what appears to be a razor wire all the way around. And as you're approaching, uh, you can see that there is a large wooden gate in the center of the wall that's currently pulled shut. And you see what appears to be a human uh, man standing up above along the wall, uh, looking to be just kind of pacing back and forth, holding uh, some kind of firearm over his shoulder. Uh, what would the two of you like to do? I would immediately look over to Doc, just kind of um, throw a hand. But not very hard, because I don't want to just get out the way, but just the uh, looks up. I honestly don't think that any of what he has inside that gun can even... I mean, look at me. I'm sure you're right, but I'm perfectly comfortable not knowing what your insides look like. And in that case, I think we're going to have to talk here. Uh, you want to do it or you want me to? Mm -hmm. I I take two steps back and like, I, I'll be here for intimidate and tip. I'll scare things. Very good. Ho oh, there! Shouts up the top of his lungs. Yeah. Hey! <laughs> Shouting up towards Sorry. this individual. Uh, as you get closer, you can see that he too is wearing what appears to be this long, uh, like, leather duster that's very much, you can see, has been hastily stitched together in a lot of places. Uh, very much looks like it's been blown apart and stitched back together time and time again. Uh, he appears to be wearing, like, this nice piece of uh, chest armor. Uh, that has like a, uh, a, star, a star within a circle uh, painted on the chest plate. Uh, he's kind of got just this messy uh, brown hair that's just about shoulder length, uh, rocking the five o'clock shadow. As you approach, he kind of looks down towards the both of you. Ah. Traders? Yes, sir. What you hauling? Mostly junk, but useful junk. Although old Bessie uh, doesn't like when I call her that, pat the Brahmin's head. And Bessie just kind of looks towards you and just kind of... Right. Well, uh, Mayor's always looking for supplies, so I guess we can let you in. I'd be much obliged. Just don't cause too much trouble now. Oh, not at all. No trouble. You know that old saying, ancient proverb, don't start none, won't be none. I like you already. You'll fit right in. What's what's proverb mean? Uh, it means fancy old saying by dead folk. All right. All right. Uh, and you see him kind of disappear behind the wall. And you hear what sounds to be a lever clicking. And you see the two large wooden gates begin to push themselves open. Uh, and as the gates open up, you can see now what to, appears to be the remnants of a massive city. Uh, that people have begun to kind of settle down in. 
Uh, looking about, you see various different shops and traders kind of setting up their own little stalls and camps here. Um, kind of towards the center, uh, you see what appears to be the massive skeleton of an old shopping mall. Uh, and sharing a parking lot with the shopping mall, you do see the massive familiar sign of a red rocket ship sitting up on two poles uh, with a small covered little gas station right next to uh, right next to the mall here as you're entering into the city uh, and you begin walking through the gates and once again that individual kind of looks back at both of you just remember no trouble you said hand that across, twice hand across my heart and hope someone else dies give him a wink and walk on I just give them a, a stare and just and I turn around and start following Doc. He just kind of stares back towards you and just, huh. Don't usually see too many, uh, well, of you. <laughs> At least ones that don't want to, you know, shoot first and ask questions later. Just a, a nod of, and I turn right around and start walking with Doc. All right. Uh, you and Doc... Continuing on further uh, into the city of New Medford. Uh, and the first area that you pass would be uh, the massive Red Rocket gas station. Uh, where as you're passing through, you do see a little floating individual kind of uh, in the area. Ruby, would you please describe who it is Doc and Tanya see as they're passing by your station here? <clears throat> Certainly. Uh, so Ruby is a handy unit, and this is her red rocket station. She's been here since the, oh goodness gracious, uh, since uh, the Great War, since the bombs fell. So quite a while. This is her home, and um, it's pretty beat up. She is completely covered um, in red paint, although it's chipping off here and there. It's been a while since she painted herself last time. She's also welded a big red bow on top of her big dome. Um, and you'll notice, uh, so she does have, you know, her three oculars, but she also has her three arms, two of which are flamethrowers. And one of them's a pincer because, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to pick stuff up and do things. Uh, but yeah, she, uh, just floating around and just, um, you know, picking up and tidying up and making repairs and whatnot, making herself useful because this is her home. Now, making repairs, what kind of repairs are we talking here? Oh, uh, well, there's lots of bullet holes everywhere. There's also some smashed in windows there. Uh, one time raiders tried to come over and uh, they broke into the garage or tried to. And then I made a fire pit out of them. That was fun. Um, but yeah, so uh, just, you know, boarding up stuff, patching holes, you know, making uh, fill, making some concrete, filling in holes here and there. Just, you know, the random necessary repairs. This one had me at fire pit. I know. I love a lady who knows how to turn up the heat. Uh, wandering up to the Ruby Rocket, or the Red Handy Unit, mm -hmm. raise my hand in greeting. Ho there! All right, state your business. <laughs> I have both my flamer arms pointed directly at you. Ah, I don't want no trouble now. Uh, I um, uh, Tanya slowly kind of grabs for the super sledge. Like mm -hmm. Tanya, no, not, not unless I you want to be a puddle of flesh on the floor. Melted, listen, listen. Melted super mutant stew. Look, I've had that before. It's not too bad. Kind of spicy. We're talking the same thing, right? Look, I know every young man's fantasy is to get between two women in a spicy old time, but that ain't what we're here for. Calm down, Tanya. All right? Slowly. You're a one, all right? Slowly. I Still keeping one of them up. Tanya and Doc. Training on the super mutant. Uh, go ahead and uh, give me perception checks here, if you would. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a uh, survival plus your perception stat. Uh, um, you said Tanya, too? Tanya and Doc, please. Yep. Is it two dice or is it one? Yep. Uh, you're going to roll 2d20. Thank you. You're going to add your and... survival and your perception together. And you want to roll below whatever that number is. Right. 
One success. Okay. Okay, sorry, I'm just, I'm still going through it all. So okay, survival. You're good, you're good. Uh, that's two successes. This is nine and a ten. All right, no worries. Uh, as you're reaching for your sledgehammer, you do hear the sound of a hunting rifle cocking. As you see that individual from the gates kind of pointing it in your direction. <laughs> I just look, and I just do one of these. And he kind of looks over towards Ruby. Just kind of gives you a little bit of a nod. One of my eyes just kind of like turns over there and like it's whirring. It's like <laughs> focusing it in, in and out. <laughs> I think every time uh, Ruby's like, anything moves, immediate Tanya's just every single time. Uh, now, if we're not going to start with the shooting and the firing. I was just seeing if maybe you'd like to peruse my wares. Makes a motion towards the giant cart full of absolute useless junk that Bessie is hauling. Good uh, quality. I uh, wouldn't right. go that far, but it will make for some useful scrap to uh, fix some of your holes here. and yeah, Or make new ones. Us. Well, no, nah, we ain't making no new holes up in here. But you know, if uh, if you, yeah, yeah, as long as you're here, not here to take my stuff, I reckon I can take a, a gander. What you got? I ain't here to take no one's stuff. Here to lighten my own load, except for maybe some caps. I find these old bones carry caps a lot easier than they carry goods. <laughs> I got Although, plenty of those. Bones or caps? I need to check. Both. Bones. <laughs> I like you. I don't. I don't. Rec I don't really need to eat eat them. I don't make stews or whatnot. But you know what? Some people like to make armor out of them, so make good for trade. They do. Uh, now, can you cook flesh that's not attached to living things, or? Oh yeah, we've got one of them boiler mods. All of us do. Apparently, mm. and cook quick. Cook the the meat right up. Purify some water. Easy. Ah, oh, purified water. So no useful. use for it. Everything has a value to different people. And I'll tell you what, when you're out in the waste for your third day and you're not built to last like you are, you got to just dreaming about that cold. I'm going to get an off topic. It's Sorry, hot. The, I boil it. The mind wanders after about seven decades, you understand. Now, he uh, points to the card again. If you'd like. I'll take a gander. What you got? <laughs> like, looking over. Still, one freaking arm is just right on Tanya as I, like, do do a little twirly-loo around the, the thing, but never taking that flamer off of Tanya, just in case. It's Smart. literally nothing but scrap and old tire rubber. Like, nothing that anyone in their right mind would pay for. Ain't no, you ain't got no flame or fuel. Uh, I used to, but I sold it. I don't have much use for the flame or fuel. I'm not sure I could even lift it. Tanya could, but she gets a bit excited, you understand? I actually have some, believe it or not. And Amelia just whips out this, like, kind of go, you hear the sounds of like, uh, like metal shells, kind of like just, or just, you know, bullet shells, kind of like getting rummage through and ah and pulls out like a a propane tank sized uh fuel like um hands it over to doc strength too much uh how full how empty you 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 i don't have that this i don't need this this i you have you you take this i'll take it yeah. I'm giving it away <laughs> Doc has it in his hand. I don't know how many caps you willing to trade for it. Mm. Mm, I look I look at Doc and then I look back at Tanya who's still holding it. And then I look up and like my eyes are just like adjusting, trying to like size up Tanya. Three caps. Three caps would be good for an empty one. 
let's start that at nine and see how close we can get. Considering this is not taking it from Tanya, but very gently lifting it and wiggling it near his ear. Eh, about halfway between half and full. Now nah, then two, two caps then. Mm. Mm. Can't do two caps. You Listen, said you don't even need it. I you said I don't need it, but you do. And your I needs to accept the price. Needed it, but... mm. This one asked floating metal. All right. Four caps it is. Five. And cook some of this meat here I got in the back and we'll call it a deal. All right. Let's do that. I'll do that deal. Excellent. Yeah, Tanya, meat. Like, mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, the caps are traded for the fuel. Ruby, you start uh, grilling up some of the various meats that Doc and Tanya have acquired along their journey. Uh, mm. I'm going to say it, it's probably just a lot of like basic rad roach and mole rat meat. Nothing super, super fancy. No, no Yao Guay or, uh, or Death Claw just yet. Uh, <laughs> Cuisine. <laughs> but as that is being cooked up and going on over at the truck stop, let's go ahead and jump across town. Uh, to another building uh, that sur somehow survived the bombs that fell. Uh, this massive rectangular uh, building that once served as a roller rink. Uh, and is now just simply known as the rink. Uh, and in this area, those who live in the city of New Medford all know that the rink has been claimed almost exclusively by raiders. Uh, now, occasionally, they might let some of these folks through to come in, uh, as they do have one of the rougher bars within this building. Uh, however, those willing to pay for a nice stiff drink, if you got the caps, they'll probably let you through. Uh, only if they're in the right mood for it. But as we kind of go over into this building, uh, the walls are lined up with old Nuka-Cola vending machines. Uh, there's a small little side room that's got uh, a few different board or, uh, uh, arcade games uh, set up. Uh, and situated towards the back of this area is almost just this little bar that's kind of sunken down into the ground uh, with just this large mahogany bar uh, with just bottles of bourbon and vodka and beer and Nuka-Cola and Quantum all just stacked very neatly behind uh, with about four bar stools situated. And the rest of the space is entirely taken up by this roller rink floor. And uh, skating along this floor, we see one particular individual rolling with her group of raiders. Darby, would you please describe who it is we see skating on the rink currently? Yeah, so Darby and the gang um, are a bunch of ghouls, to say the least. Uh, they've got very, uh, undead-looking features. Some of them are missing, like, eyes out of the socket and things like that, but most of them are just, like, skin tight to the face, uh, gaunt-looking. Some of them are missing nose, ears, things like that, and they just look like the meanest bunch of rollerbladers that you've ever seen in your life um they're uh they've clearly been around the the rink a few times uh having survived the war um in in its many uh atrocities um but darby specifically has has short dark hair that's got a few clumps missing but for the most part is well groomed uh she still puts on lipstick in the morning and everything like that, um, wearing dark raider uh, leathers and spikes and things like that, but um, with still some fun stripy socks and, and knee pads that, uh, that I've definitely seen better days. Um, and uh, two uh, roller blades on her feet, uh, as if she's not even doing anything other than walking. It's as easy as air for her, uh, just gliding around the rink smoking a cigarette while she does it um and uh just eyeballing the the person in front of her thinking about how she can kneecap them in a minute <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Excellent. Uh, and as you're kind of rolling through with your ghoul gang, go ahead and give me a survival perception check, if you would. Oh, boy. Survival perception. You're going to make me roll first. I am. Oh, God. Okay. And that's... Uh, 2d20. Uh, yep. And you want to roll underneath whatever those two numbers are added together. Okay. So my perception is 5 and my survival is 3, so that's 8. 8, correct. I've got a 6 and a 10. Okay, one success is all you needed. Uh, as you're kind of rolling through, uh, you see the doors to the rink kind of open up, and you see uh, an individual that you would recognize uh, from the town, uh, one of the New Medford Guard, wearing similar uh, clothing to that first individual that Doc and Tanya encountered, of that of the uh, stitched-together duster, the um, very nice, heavy uh, uh, chest armor piece with the star on the circle. Uh, and you see this individual kind of walk in and he kind of just nods to a couple of the raiders that are kind of standing around in the arcade. Uh, he walks over towards the bar and kind of takes up a seat. Uh, and he sits down next to another human individual. And he kind of looks over. He says, uh, I don't know if you heard yet, Zenon, but we got some new traders in town. And as he kind of looks towards you, Zenon, would you please describe your character for us? All right. So Zenon, he's a little bit smaller in the Wastelander garb. He's got a messy old leather jacket and a uh, large rifle kind of covered in a, a cloth on his back. And he kind of just looks over. He's playing with a couple caps in his hand couple traders you say how about that yeah look to be uh pretty well traveled one looks to be hugh in the end uh he's traveling with a damn super mutant haven't seen one of those in a while well shit last time they came through we took care of them <laughs> never even saw it coming hmm. is that tower still up there you know little one we saw them from? Oh, yeah. Right. It's still intact. Interesting. Maybe we, I should go take a look. You know, make sure there's no trouble going on. Yeah, if you want to, sounds good. I mean, what I heard sound like they were uh, trading with Ruby last time I saw. Trading with Ruby? That must have been a fun thing to watch. I wonder who uh, <laughs> sent word. No, well, you know, Ruby's a little spitfire, so... I wouldn't be surprised if uh, she's cooking up some super mutant steaks right now. I haven't had that in a while either. <laughs> Maybe uh, should go pay her a visit. And try to get a good taste of that. Yeah, I right. want to take see what's going of, on. Uh, I want to take a couple of these folks with you, kind of gesturing towards uh, some of the raiders who are currently in the area. You never know with new folk what their intentions are. Do like the way we are living here at the moment. And uh, kinda you see him scoots kinda, his chair back and stand. He reaches into his duster and pulls out what appears to be like a small little. Uh, looks like to be about the size of like an out tin. Um, there's just a piece of scotch tape over it with a handwritten and pen just says caps. He just kind of slides it over to you. Yeah, might want to hire one of them. Yeah. More you know, as there. he's kind of pushing up and pushing his chair away, he places his hand discreetly on that uh, tin and kind of stands up and lifts it. Let's see who we can find. All right. And it walks around the little uh, bar that they're sitting at. All right, you walk around. Uh, Darby, with your perception check, you would have seen kind of this conversation going down uh, with this mm -hmm. individual kind of passing over what appears to be some kind of tin over mm -hmm. to Zenon. Um, and as then you get up and begin to walk away, uh, you see this Protectron kind of walking up behind the bar. He's got just a little bow tie kind of uh, uh, around his neck. He just kind of looks towards, can I get you something to drink? And uh, you hear the, uh, the Metroid guard just go, yeah, just a vodka neat. And you see the Protectron just kind of rotate in place and just kind of reach up and start pouring just a glass of uh, this clear liquid and passes it over to him as you're walking away here. Zenon would 
walk cool. over to where he sees the the ghoul gang. I'd like to think that someone approaches you and like is is looking like they're gonna take the offer. I come up and just grab her by the head and shove her uh, against a wall. And she kind of, you know, wanders off after that. And it's just like, I lean up against the wall as if it nothing just happened. Heard you got a proposal. You've got good ears. I ain't got ears. I got two big holes in the side of my head. They are good for hearing. Metaphor still stands. <laughs> what can I do for you for? Got a couple of... Uh... New folk visiting town. Might want to check it out. You never know how they might be uh, affecting the livelihood of those who settle here. You think they're threats? Somebody seems to think so. I'm more interested to see what's going on. Hmm. Yeah, super mutant with them. A super mutant? With a traitor? Are you sure? That's what I was told. Figured I'd see for myself. Want to join me? Why well, I can't not join you after an offer like that. I will put out my hand for money, though. <laughs> Zen doesn't even, like, look what's in the Altoid tin, but he'll, like, kind of toss it up for it to catch. That's what it's worth to somebody. Guess we'll find out why. Guess so. Over near, uh, Ruby's. Shit, and they ain't fried yet? If they are, we got dinner. You can take the super mutant. I'm good. Uh, let's roll. And I, you know... The other girls probably <laughs> take away the, 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 you know, they all head off the, uh, the rink and whatnot and start getting ready for things. And, you know, at that point, I'm probably just like, they're going to take a bit to take the skates off and everything. We can go. Alrighty. Let's take a gander over there. And, uh. He'll just kind of start turning and walking out of the place. All right, you begin walking out. Uh, Darby right behind you. Yep, uh, skating two, behind. Rocking those <laughs> roller skates the entire time. I love it. Until uh, I can't. <laughs> sure. Uh, exiting out of the building. Uh, the two of you have been in New Medford long enough to where you know the area fairly well. Um, takes you about uh, 20 or so minutes on foot to make your way over towards uh, Ruby's rocket stop here. Uh, and sure enough, as you approach, you do see the familiar figure of Ruby. Uh, you see a massive Brahmin kind of standing there hauling this cart of just, what you can tell just looks like a bunch of shit uh, that nobody would ever even take two looks at. Uh, but you do in fact see a human and a super mutant all kind of gathered around whatever the fuck Ruby is currently torching uh, out in the middle of her parking lot here. Well, how about that? They were telling the truth. You think there were three of them, and they've just decided to go cannibal? <laughs> I mean, out here, would you be surprised? Not really. I flick my uh, cigarette as close as I can to the gas station. I think it's a, I think it's a, a regular occurrence that I try to get it just close enough that she doesn't feel like Ruby will sweep it away. And so it's like a competition every time to get it close, but not too close, uh, okay, to see sure. if your cigarette stays. Uh, go ahead and just for the hell of it, uh, give me a throwing strength check here to see how far you oh, can toss God. your cigarette. Strength, so is, uh, just straight strength? Uh, strength plus throwing. Strength plus throwing, so that's seven, eight, nine. I got a five... And a ten. Five and a ten, excellent. Uh, and Ruby, go ahead and give me a survival perception, if you would. It's 
It's like a game of chicken. <laughs> but I love that Ruby probably is just so irritated by this. Yeah, that's going to be a big fat zero. All right. I, I, I got zero. Nada. Okay. Yeah. Didn't right. roll a complication. <laughs> uh, Darby, you flick your cigarette, and you can see a couple of the old butts that are currently sitting there. Uh, this one rolls just up to the edge of the nearest gas pump uh, before you see the smoke kind of dissipate and the uh, the flame on it kind of goes out into nothingness. I'm going to have a good day. It's the little things in the wasteland, you know. <laughs> um, <How's it> going? <laughs> yeah, let's check out these freaks. All right, two of you approach. Uh, Tanya and Dark. <laughs> Hold it right there. State your business. Still have one on Tanya. Now the other one is <laughs> one two of y'all approaching. <laughs> Never taking this one off of Tanya yet. <laughs> I ain't too fond of talking. You? My turn is ended because I don't know his name. <laughs> Just wandering. Uh, got word that there was new folk in town. Figured we'd take a look. You said you didn't like talking, but you did. It's a figure of speech, dear Tanya. Oh. Right. Zero in on Darby. Hey. Ain't you one of them ones that came and shot my place up? Hmm. Maybe eight years back. Eight years back, yep. Mm-hmm. No Torch a bunch of my friends. Yep, you're all alone now. Now we replenish. I'm back. I start, like, her eyes are, like, one one's still on Tanya, and one flamer's still on Tanya. <laughs> but now the other two eyes are, like, looking around to try to see if we're being surrounded because she's, like, not going to have her place raided again. Uh, sure, Not you, yet. <laughs> you give me another uh, survival perception if you want to, Ruby. And give me a fresh one. Okay. Oh, this is much better. One success. Okay, excellent. And Tony and Doc, you, you kind of hear and see this going on as well. Um, any any reactions or actions from the two of you at this point as you see now Darby and Shannon <clears throat> approaching? Um, if Tanya was sitting down, they would be standing back up. Um looking at the flamer cannon that's aimed currently at Tanya and then looking at these person just started talking and then... remember them them bones I was telling you about that's where they came mm. from oh mm. <laughs> well brothy listen right I don't know your business here I don't know what the history is but Looks like these people are just here in peace at the moment. Until they're not. A good question, or a good point, rather. What y'all doing around here? <laughs> Funny a free you say country. that. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> not free for enough. the past two centuries. <laughs> free enough for me. <laughs> a bit too free from the sounds of it. Uh, freedom tends to stop where other people's bodies and belongings I, begin. Uh, you can see that I've got a, a bat strapped to my back and a gun on my hip, but I'm not going for either of them currently, just standing there, staring at both of you, staring at the robot, back to the super mutant. Mm. Then it's... it's starts to walk over to Tanya and Doc. You know, almost like in kind of a nod to Ruby, but not paying her too much mind. Seems, uh, you say, uh, you ask us of our business, yet you're the ones who are not from around here. Oh, that's obvious. I'm new. I'm a traveler. I'm a trader. Motions to the Brahmin in the cart. If you want to browse my wares, go right ahead. Don't mind, he ain't got nothing on that pack. 
Ain't nothing worth stealing either, Darby. And now that's not nice, but I will agree. Nothing on there's worth I'm stealing. I'm helping you. The most <laughs> valuable thing I got is these hands. I can fix just about anything that's not living or breathing. Thought you were going to imply something else for a minute. <laughs> now that's on you. Is it? <laughs> Look, I am too old to make the dirty kinds of jokes, all right? I got my mind on other things than my pants currently. Old. <laughs> Kanye is visibly confused. <laughs> Look, I've been trying to pickle my body part by part. I didn't get hit all at once like you did. I'm sorry. I'm working on it. Still. Uh, and I will say, Ruby, with your uh, perception from earlier, you do not see any of Darby's ghoul gang. It appears to just be her at this time. Now, why on earth would you risk coming out here alone? Well, and then, like, one of the eyes, like, mo moves over to Zen Zenon. Kind of. Alone. Why does anybody do anything nowadays? I was paid. Fair enough. Money is a strange thing. People do strange things for money and... You know? I was paid to pay somebody to come out here. Ah. Doc's looking around. Do I see our friend from earlier? Uh, give me a perception survival, if you would. One success. One success. Uh, as you're kind of looking back towards the main gate entryway, you do see that familiar individual uh, who now appears to be talking to another uh, another man who appears to be wearing what looks like a um, very makeshift like three-piece suit. Uh, it almost looks like two blazers have been stitched together. One side of it's like a burgundy, the other one's like a like a deep, uh, like navy blue color. Uh, simple black slacks, a button-down white shirt, and a tie. Uh, wearing looks like a fedora. Um, mm. With that perception check, you can see that his hands that are sticking out through the sleeves have a ton of tattoos. Like they are just covered to where there's barely any skin poking through them. Oh, I don't like that. Doc will say it out loud. Not particularly loud, but loud enough anybody nearby can hear it. That's got all the looks of someone talking to the brass or the politicians, and neither one bodes well. Uh, but more loudly, he'll say, Tanya does tend to draw a crowd. She's friendly, and she's got a hell of a juggling arm. I'm Tanya. Thank you. This here's old Bessie, like I said a minute ago. She's not much of a juggler, but her ears going in one ear, and uh, we're just trying to get on down the road. And you would be? Doc Hawthorne, if you please. I'm Tanya. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's a pleasure to meet the two of you. Call me Zenin. Oh, so that's what you're named. All right. <laughs> well, if we're we're getting to know one another. Name's Ruby. Ruby Rocket. Just like the Red Rocket. And I'm Darby. You should know me by now. Mm-hmm. Again, the eye. Just <laughs> focusing in and out on Darby. <laughs> so, uh, the... The power structure around these parts. They contact contract with mercenaries a lot. I've done some work here and there. If they need something killed or stolen, yes. Yeah, sounds familiar. And as this conversation's happening, uh, you notice the individual in the suit begin to approach uh, with the same guard from earlier. Mm. Uh, as he walks over, 
Uh, which is kind of I smell cool. caps in danger. This this massive shit eating grin on his face uh, as he walks over and just kind of throws his arms in the air. Welcome, new friends, to New Medford. Uh, always a pleasure to see some new faces. Uh, uh, Ruby, do you really need to be pointing those things everywhere? Come now, we, we not everywhere, just at the big one there and the squirrely one there. I mean. I understand that they're unfamiliar, but come now, we're we're very welcoming of everybody here. And that one try that one was gonna bash my dome in, and that one, well, her people tried to bash my dome in a long time ago. Can't was, be too careful I, now. Now, Darby, you haven't caused any more trouble since then, have you? At least not here. Not here, that's for sure. Mm. And I haven't taught her a lesson anything. last time. One doesn't shit where she eats. Mm. And uh, he kind of just looks towards you, Doc and Tanya. Oh, wh where are my manners? I'm so sorry. Uh, name's Danny Laid. I'm the mayor of this town. Uh, that's an interesting name. Uh, I think you're in the wrong franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Doc I'm Hawthorne. Dude and Conan. <laughs> this here's my friend, Tanya. I'm Tanya. Yeah. There, Tanya. Yes. Oh. Who, who is that again? Zenon, I think he said his name was. I'm not going to remember that. Uh, small, really squishy do. one with big gun. Big gun. I can do big gun. Well, you right. look pretty capable there. Tanya. Uh. I, I was just addressing you by your name. That's what I like to do when I meet new people. Right. You're Tanya. That's... Yes. I think uh, I've said that numerous times. Uh, three so far. Three more and we'll beat your record. Uh, now, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Laid, you got a grin that says one of two things. I'm about to send you into hell, and I'm about to pay to send you into hell, and I just want to know which one you're aiming for right now. Oh, I see you like to get right to the point of things. I'm old. I don't got much time left. Oh, nonsense. I'm sure we can find somebody to pick up and fix up any ailments you may have. We've got uh, several wonderful doctors here. Um, mm, matter of fact, we've even, we've even got a chapter of the Brotherhood in town. <laughs> I was going to say I don't trust doctors, but I sure as hell don't trust the Brotherhood. <laughs> Tanya is like... Mm, oh, not oh, yet. Oh, I apologize. I... Uh, the whole relationship sometimes slips my mind, uh, Tanya. Don't worry, they're uh, they're more of the scientific type chapter, not more of the uh, soldier type here. Mm. The scowl gets deeper. Yeah, fun fact about those sciencey types: they can still climb in power armor and be all kinds of trouble. But that's neither here nor there. Again, you were gonna get to the point. Uh, yes. Uh, well, we're always welcome to uh, newcomers and traders. Uh, however, we're also very much always open to those willing to work to better mm. our community, whether it be our infrastructure or perhaps safety, as he kind of looks towards Tanya and your giant super sledge uh, slung over your back. As he kind of says that, Zenon looks over his... Uh... So I'm guessing that's the real reason why your folk uh, paid to have me, paid to have somebody come and say hi to the newcomers, not actually to say hi to the newcomers, but because you got some kind of proposal. Well, it was pretty sure doc. That's too many words. <laughs> Yeah, he's either going to pay us or he's going to waste our time. That's oh. what he's saying. Well, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, you are quite the hard individual to reach at times. And, uh, you know, we've got to take those opportunities when we can. So a simple task seemed like the perfect opportunity to get you to pop out into the open and join us out in the fresh air for a change. Well, mostly fresh. 
I wouldn't trust like, it. If he knows you by name, there's something wrong. Yeah, I was going to say, he's clearly been looking for you. Now, uh, Mr. Mayor, not to be too rude about it, but I got enough Brahmin shit over here. I don't need more that whole time thing again. What you need done? Well, how you would are you talking like... a lot of words, Mr. Mayor. How, how would you like to get more than just your casual junk and Brahmin shit, as you call it? That's what every politician says. I'm not, I'm not also a every officer says I'm just ah. a, 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 you know a much beloved ah. figurehead of our community Ruby politician figurehead or brass which is he well you heard him most beloved mm. <laughs> Squ squishy do you say squishy out loud Tanya yeah <laughs> okay uh, and as you say squishy uh, he kind of backs away from you just a touch and kind of puts uh, the guard from earlier kind of between you and him mm. anyway definitely brass mm. if you folks are looking to uh, perhaps make a few caps and even scavenge some more useful items, kind of looking over your cart. Uh, I may have an offer that sounds appealing to you. Like we keep saying, uh, Mr. Mayor, a lot of words. Doc's not got much time. I might be dying right now. Oh, I'm this not. feeling all... in my heart, it's either intense boredom or an oncoming heart attack. Same thing. I'm Tanya. <laughs> We're at four. Uh, not, not to, <clears throat> if you're talking to me too, Mr. Mayor, uh, who's going to be looking after my place of business? You know, I don't like to leave it. Oh, don't worry. But... Trev can keep an eye from the gates here. Nah, I don't trust Trev. Okay, would you rather have Carl? He's the bot. Uh, the no. bot guy, no, fella. You, you want an eye bot? We can get you an eye bot. I think, uh, I think he's available. Um. If, if no you, offense. Yeah. I'd rather have one of my kind, at least my kind adjacent here watching over the shop, just in case. Sure, if you don't want an organic, I completely understand. Uh, I can I can see if Jeeves is available. Yep, that that that'll do it right there. I don't have to pay. What's organic, Speaking Doc? Speaking of it's Carl squishy and uh, oh and pay though. Organic. Carl still organic. owes me a couple caps. Did he not pay Please you let him know. Oh, okay, uh, I will. I will talk to Carl. Don't worry. We'll make sure you're well compensated, uh, Mr. Jones. Your your couple caps in addition to an extra hundred fifty, if you uh, take on this task. Nah. Now we've reached the price point. What's the job? Because that determines the value. It's really quite simple. Uh, there's uh, an old, oh, what do they call them back in the day? Uh, some kind of fun center uh, just outside Next Town Over in Central Point. Um, I think they call it uh, the Family Fun Center. Uh, apparently there's, uh, from what I've heard, rumors of some wanderers stashing some goods over there. You know, uh, nicer weaponry. Perhaps some ammo, water, food, anything you can find. I remember that place. We used to get a lot of traffic back in the day. It was a big tourist trap. Mm -hmm. Filled up a lot of Corvega back in that times. Back in... My you question is... Tourists? Yeah. What yeah. kind of trap is it today? Yeah, Ruby says trap and I'm... And Tanya's just... Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine you're going to run into much out there. You know, your normal wasteland fare. Mole rats, rat did say roach. they're well supplied, though. He's also... Notice he's not uh, getting his own people, like 
Carl or Trev or any of those iBots to go no. do it. He's getting some expendables, specifically a couple of travelers and, you know, a mercenary, a raider, and the irreplaceable Ruby over here. What kind of figurehead I... would I be if I sacrificed my own town security? I... Mm. Can, I, Ruby, can I have one of those bones, please? Bones? Are you still... I... Uh... Mm. <laughs> like a head nod. Right. Um, you said Radroach. Probably. Yeah. But there's more than just Radroach ball rat down in California Doc and I ran into a beast much bigger than any any rat roach Doc gives you a look the first like sharp look he's given in a long time like you're not supposed to tell big beast <clears throat> uh, I've never heard of such a big beast I mean uh, rumors of course but I mean actually see one in person you say now that's i'm certain you saw something else it's was it the big of... show what the big show was it him <laughs> looking at ruby it was big but we didn't see long enough we wanted it wanted to show us which is very likely the inside of its belly yeah he's probably dead by now anyway that sucks. Tanya, it sounds like you're scared. Are you scared, Tanya? Look at um, Darby and wrinkly one. Well, that's Not rude. Much... <laughs> Not much scares, scares me. Not much. To be on, to be on, to be a word that I cannot think of. The Brotherhood scare me more. Brotherhood eat more. Produce less of value. Uh, mm. Anyway, uh, directions and I believe you were talking to us in the amount of 250 caps apiece. Hmm. Mm. What I heard. Uh, Doc, go ahead and give me a uh, charisma speech here, if you would. Absolutely. Speech. And yeah. as then Doc says, he's then it's like, you must have good ears in those that old age, Doc, because that's exactly what I heard too. One success. One success. Okay. Uh, uh, would Zenny be allowed to assist with that, saying, could Zenny roll a 1d20 as an assist on that skill check? No, oh, well, yeah. They said yeah, what they yeah. said. Yeah, speech uh, charisma for you too, Zenny. Just in case, just in case. Yeah, totally fair. <laughs> All right, just one, here we go. Uh, speech charisma. No, I did not get a success. Okay, just the one success. Uh, I tried. And, and the mayor kind of looks towards you. 150 is what I said. You're right. Mm. And you see his kind of shit-eating green kind of slowly start to fade away. Now, you see, again, you're looking at a group of expendables trying to get them to do a job where, frankly, you don't know me, you don't know Tanya. I don't know how well you know Zen and Darby or Ruby here, but you're talking about some nice quality weapons and ammunition. There's something we're not talking about. So you can either keep your secrets and give us 250 a piece to risk life and limb, because that's 50 uh, caps a limb uh, and less in Ruby's case. But, or you can be straight and we'll get closer to that 150 price point, you reckon. And I know you care about providing value to all of your potential constituents, don't you? Was constituents. People he's looking after. Oh. Okay. People whose best interest he's supposed to have at heart. 
don't break contact, eye contact as I say this. Constitu Constitu hmm. All right, Doc, go ahead and give me another uh, speech charisma, if you would. Two successes. Two successes. All right. And it kind of looks towards you. All right, fine. I may have heard a little bit more as to what you may find there. Rumor has it that a vault nearby opened up. A mm. vault that hasn't opened at least as long as well, the city's been around. A couple hundred years. Called Vault 93. Rumor has it there's been some individuals in uh, blue jumpsuits walking through the area. Friendly or not, I can't tell you. Oh, I see. Okay. So what you're actually wanting is reconnaissance. Now, I got a little more experience at that. Be happy to do it for 175 per head. And he kind of thinks for a moment and looks over the group. We can do 175. And he holds out his hand. <clears throat> Look at the group. Dead or alive. Well, if you run into trouble, do what you got to do. <laughs> Hell yeah. I <laughs> look at Ruby. <laughs> Sky metal, right. Hell yeah. <laughs> How many people did you see out there? You know, you have a little basic reconnaissance in the, the blue jumpsuit folk, but. Uh, no, I think our last eyeball ever. spotted uh, three of them. Three? You're employing five to go search out three? I mean, they just walked out of a vault. I don't know what kind of tech they're pulling. Three for back. certain. Potentially a lot more. And yeah. Then... If my There's recollection uh, is correct, they used to have at least 50, sometimes hundreds of people in them vaults when they uh when the disaster hit never know how many survived or didn't i'm willing to take the risk looking at tanya and ruby and zenin and uh darby well guess we could uh investigate glad you're speaking for him because uh, I would have took 50 caps. Shit. <laughs> Shake the mayor's hand. Well, careful what you say out loud. He might just pay you 50 and the rest of us 175. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> and as he's shaking Doc's hand, he kind of gets that grin across his face once again. No, no, no. Don't worry. I'm a man of my word. 175 apiece. Oh, good. Because if you ain't, I am. <laughs> And with the handshake, uh, he kind of reaches into his jacket uh, and pulls out uh, uh, a few little Mentats containers. As he pops them open, you can see there's just stacks of caps in there. And he kind of just hands each of you one of these little containers filled with caps. 175 in each of those, guaranteed. Okay, it's like that. Sounds like it's full of caps. I look at it and just hand it to Doc. Like, mm -hmm. Now, y'all do good work. Maybe we talk about uh, continuing on a bit farther. I like a good working relationship. As do I. All right, Trev. Open her up. And you see Trevor Don't forget there. to tell uh Carl, Carl, couple caps, I got gotcha. you. Who and who's watching my stuff? Uh and as you say that, uh you see 
a Protectron come meandering over to stomp in left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. Uh, this one has uh, what appears to be a little top hat, uh, a metal one that appears to be magnetized to the top of his head. Uh, you see one arm is almost like the spinning uh, little knob that appears to have like some energy building up in front of it. You can tell, uh, you would know he's got like a laser built into one arm and just a massive pincer built into the other one as he just comes kind of meandering over. Does he have a little mustache sticker? He has a mush mustache sticker. <laughs> he just kind of turns towards you. I got it, Miss Rocket. Don't touch my stuff now. I have no need for stuff, Miss Rocket. What's his name again? Uh, this is Jeeves. Uh, J33V3S. <laughs> just for... I know he touched my stuff. Just for curiosity's sake, does this thing look easier to overpower than Ruby does? Uh, yeah, I would I would say he's not as he doesn't look as sturdy uh, as Ruby does. Okay, just good to know. Uh, however, I'm not sure how many Protectrons you fought in your time, so. Uh, leave that oh, not you. me, not <laughs> me. <laughs> so uh, just uh, just saving for future reference. Sure, sure. Uh, but you see Trevor kind of go over and pull on the lever as the two large wooden gates kind of swing back open, uh, revealing Interstate Five once more. Um, and uh, you see the massive freeway signs that are currently uh, just have little bits and splatters of paint remaining on them. Um, but it does say central point two miles. Better go get my stuff. I'll be right back. All right. Ruby retrieving her equipment. Um, and as you all prepare to leave, we'll go ahead and take a quick 10 minute break. Uh, so thank you all so, so much for joining us so far for the first part of this journey. Uh, to our Raiders, thank you so much. We appreciate you all popping on in. Uh, we'll see you all back here in about 10, 15 minutes or so. So stretch out, hydrate, do all that good stuff. We'll see you soon. Bye!
and welcome back everybody just make sure i'm not muted anywhere we're good tech things uh anyway uh our lovely group of misfits here uh with a handshake between doc and mayor danny laid uh have agreed to take a job for 175 caps per person uh, to head just north to Central Point and the Family Fun Center uh, where allegedly there's some gear stashed and perhaps some, some vault dwellers wandering around. Um, so Ruby, you are currently packing up whatever it is you need to pack up from your stop here uh, as Jeeves has now made his way and is just kind of patrolling, just kind of just mindlessly wandering between the gas pumps and the station and just back and forth, back and forth. Um, Actions from the rest of you. Anything that you would like to prep before you head out on your adventure? I would mainly be with Doc and just are making sure that um, uh, our Brahmin are it's all taken care of and just kind of staring at anybody who's like looking and just continue to stare at them until they stop staring at me. Uh, it's just it's just Trev who's over at the lever and he's just like. Careful now, Tanya. He's making bedroom eyes at you. <laughs> I don't understand. Means he's giving you a good old eye fucking. I think I'm gonna be sick. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I whistle. I, I do a series of whistles and then leave no explanation. Um, but essentially for the DM... <laughs> I am marking this place as a target for later. Gosh damn it. <laughs> I knew it. Okay. That's why I uh, had somebody watching the place. Go ahead. Somebody <laughs> who's not you. Gosh dang it, Jeebs. Okay. <sighs> Better take care. If I come home to a bunch of dead raiders, oh well. No, good to uh, know. Okay. So when I come out, like I have scribbled a note again. Uh, with my pincer arm inside, um, <laughs> especially and posted one. I, I I actually did it a few a few notes. Don't touch my stuff, Jeebs. And I put it like on several different items. One of which is my stack of um, computer games and a stack of hollow tapes that has a bunch of old western movies and a, a couple of, a stack a couple of space movies with one Han Solo in them. Um, and then I come out with um, a Han, uh, well, a Star Wars Han Solo uh, duffel bag. And uh, one of the items that my, that uh, I have in it, that's kind of sticking out that my pincer arm can grab um, is a sledgehammer. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, super sledge. God. And I've got sledge and envy right now, since you have a super sledge and I just have a regular sledge, so. A freaking handy with a sledge. I love it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya, make new friend. <laughs> <clears throat> all right ruby all packed up you hear darby just kind of let out just a series of whistles you can't tell if uh if she's just whistling a tune or what's going on there uh doc and tanya uh anything the two of you want to grab from the cart um and zen anything else you want to grab from town here um well first off i'm gonna put old bessie in the garage make her all comfortable like uh, move the cart around back. Um, after that, Doc's gonna grab his own go bag. It's one about half the size of him. Uh, that dark hunter green color. Just sling it over his shoulder. All right. Um, Tanya would probably just <clears throat> grabbing like, um, some I'm not going to say snacks, but anything in the form of like uh, like Ooh, uh, right. like rad roach jerky sure. or anything along those lines, and um, again making sure you know I got healing salves, stim packs of plenty if available, and uh, still have the mini gun still touted around their back, but uh, are uh, nearby I think, and then having the sledge sorry on their back. That's what I mean, sledge, and then having the mini gun with it as well just looking around again 
and if I know that I'm uh, um, like I I do a really half ass look of just like all right I'm I'm fine this kind of feel into my one of my pockets of the torn raider like almost kind of like a bandolier that's like like around me just make sure that something is there that I touch it's gotta go to anybody else it just looks like I'm just kind of like hyping myself up but it's more I'm just feeling to make sure something is there sure all right uh in Zen anything in particular you'd like to grab yeah he's used to packing light and you know takes his bag off his shoulder you know kind of opens it up and, like double checks that everything's in order throws it back over his shoulder it's kind of more just a uh, preparing to leave he takes his uh, gun off of his shoulder and like unwraps it takes that cloth off of it and uh you know oils it down you know this is probably like the nicest thing he owns it's what he takes care of you know then wraps it back up puts it on the shoulder just kind of nods to the rest of them well we leaving now or y'all got other things to do ain't got time for other things Doc's got an old hunting rifle slung over his shoulder. He already said he's dying. So is the light. We I am. Go. I'm going to grab Jeebs with my pincer arm on his weak arm. <laughs> and I will hold my flamer arm up to up underneath. <laughs> well, he doesn't really have a neck. Just got but at his portion. face. Yeah. Yep, that glass. part. Now, I'm going to tell you this one time, Jeebs. I've set all kinds of traps up in there, and if you touch any of my stuff, you're going to end up in parts over there, over there, over there, over there. And I'm not going to put you back together. Understand? And Jeebs just says, protect and serve. And <laughs> is just trying to walk away. I'm not putting you back together. No, you're not. I right. put you in parts over there, over there, and over there, too. Oh, that'd be fun. I've never I been could, discombobulated before. I could break it apart. This ain't a contest, Tanya. Yet. Oh. You and if Tanya uh. may be winning. <laughs> <laughs> like, Big Gun gets it. All right. So, sounds like everything's in order. Might as well walk, what is it, the two miles town over? How long, how many, how long is, uh, travel is it to get to the fun zone? Uh, on Nate? foot, um, you could probably make it within an hour or so on foot, just moving right along. Although with Doc's old age, might be a little bit longer than that. I can move fast when I have to, or want to. By the same token, I can move just as slow as I want to. Mm -hmm. Good God. <laughs> Please, no. Like I said, it's just a couple miles. Don't it's piss not, me off. It's not too far out for you. Can you at least ride the Brahmin? Oh, I don't ride old Bessie. I used to have a Brahmin named Kimball. That one I rode all the time, but less said about him, the better. Did you eat him? Is that what I just cooked? Doc just smiles. Uh, we should be going now. That's what I just cooked. And Travis is kind of just standing over by the gate, like just kind of looking at y'all like, are you heading out? Oh, I'm going to close open. up here. And you don't touch my stuff either, Trevor. I won't. Good Lord, really. <laughs> She's so paranoid. Especially in episode three. You don't touch episode three. Don't that touch one's episode special. Three. All right, all right. I don't even know what that means, but all right. Don't touch it because it's technically it's six, but it was three. <clears throat> How does that make any sense? Uh, something from the old world, I'm sure. None of it made sense. How does they change math? What? 
<laughs> Numbers? Several times, unfortunately. Um, I'm I'm rollerblading out of here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> kind of throws up his hands and like <laughs> and just kind of starts walking off. Walking All after right. Darby. Excellent. Tanya, Tanya immediately goes like, "All right." <clears throat> Her name and her her new name is now Wheels, and then just starts walking towards the gate. Yeah, better than wrinkles. And just mm. all right. Uh, Looks like she's taking the lead. Tanya, you want to bring up the rear? I look. I look at somebody's rear. Walk in the back and make sure no one sneaks up on us. Mmm. That makes more sense. Yes. Is Tanya going to start walking backwards now? <laughs> Tanya starts walking backwards. <laughs> you know what? Does. She's got big legs. It might work. <laughs> Alright. Mm. As you're all heading out into the waste, uh, first thing I'm going to need is an athletics agility roll from Darby. Uh, as you're kind Ooh. of trying to skate along... Uh, the remnant of an interstate that's very, very bumpy and uh, dilapidated at this point. So, okay, you said out. agility and athletics. In athletics for me, correct. Okay, so that's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wait, hold on. Yeah, uh, thirteen. Okay. I'm bad at math. You're Sorry. Good. You're good. As long as you roll under thirteen, you're good. Uh, I got a ten and a twenty. <laughs> Oof. Oh gosh, you got a complication. Oof. Would you like to spend a luck point to re-roll that? Sure! Sorry. Thank, thank no, you, good. Ruby. You're good. <laughs> I would love to do that. I mean, Darby, uh, Darby, loses a, Darby loses a foot from the I chin down. I just a bone, yes. <laughs> nap a bone in half. Okay, so re-roll just... re that 20 for me. Well, that's much better. That's a seven. Okay. Excellent. So as you're beginning to kind of skate down the interstate here, uh, you do see a massive piece of rubble kind of jutting out. Uh, and just as you're about to hit it, you skate right around it and continue on heading down the interstate. Um, okay. As you're kind of rolling through, you just see the remnants of all these uh, nuclear-powered sedans and vans that are kind of just literally littering uh, a lot of the interstate here. Uh, not enough to, to block your path entirely. There's still ways that you can kind of zip through uh, and beyond. But as you're all kind of heading up to the north, um, immediately what you would notice is off to the right-hand side in the distance, what looks to be uh, the hills kind of start to come up. And sitting on top of these hills, what appears to be just this massive rock formation. Uh, you see two of them that appear to just have completely flat tops across either of them. You see two of these large formations off to the right-hand side. Uh, from your location on the interstate, they're probably five to ten miles out from your position. Um, but you continue making your way through. Everybody go ahead and give me some survival perception checks, if you would. <laughs> Uh-oh. I rolled two twenties, y'all. Oh, uh-oh. I'm gonna re- Amazing. I'm gonna- I got- it's fine. That's fine. I'm gonna reroll. Um, I've got an eight, which is a success, and a twelve, which is not. Okay. Let's see. I so landed I one. I landed on it and rolled over on one. Okay, so it's one success for you. One I success. rolled both underneath. One of them is a one. Hey. Okay. I got a seven and a six. Excellent. Okay. Got one success after my I, I I burned two luck points. Two luck points um, right. overseer. Oh, also, are we starting with six uh, six action points or are we starting at zero? Uh, no, as a group, you will start at six. Okay, cool. So, yep. okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. So we've already burned three. No, they've used. Their no, luck. those were. Yep. Our oh, luck points. sorry. So sorry. You, sorry. Uh, my, you, yeah. You each have individual luck points. Those are equal to your luck score. Um, ah. Those I will say regenerate after a full rest. Uh, and then action points, you have six as a group that you can use to do uh, various things as well. Gotcha. And that's why we use the we use one so far. You have, you or is it the same luck? Never mind. We, so we have. Again, I, I confused luck, but I'm sorry. No, you're good. There's there's a lot to this system. Uh, 
So thank you to our OG overseer, April, for being here to Hell help yeah. us all through this. I got you. And I'm, and I'm keeping track of our action points, so don't worry. Yay. I appreciate you. I'll try to remind you, like, Less like work. the luck thing. I'll be like, please, you, you can re-roll that if you'd like to. Uh, and you I don't want to lose your shin. I will say, uh, <laughs> critical successes, those will get you action points back. Uh, however, Ooh. you have a maximum of six as a group. Okay. Uh, but continuing following down the interstate, uh, heading towards the Family Fun Center... Uh, with your perception checks, uh, everybody who has succeeded, which I think everybody's got at least one success uh, on this, you hear what sounds like gunshots off in the distance uh, coming from just north of your location, so Darby especially with the two, and you kind of skating ahead. You can tell that as you're rolling along, while the gunshots aren't super consistent, you hear a fire few moments go by another shot goes off you're fairly mm. confident they're coming from the north now is it too much to assume that if it's if it's kind of sparse fire maybe someone's trying to like run away or something like that it doesn't sound like it's a it doesn't sound like it's a gunfight it sounds like one person is probably trying to defend themselves right uh, from your time in the waste, potentially, yeah, it could be like uh, an individual trying to shoot at uh, maybe an animal out in the wild, or mm -hmm. um, like you said, perhaps trying to escape something. Yeah. But yeah, it, it only from what you can determine with your with your perception, um, it does sound to be like oh, there's only one firearm. Mm. Okay. We got shots and not the the fun kind. Uh... Sounds that like it's only one. Long. But we'll see. Um, it's far off, though, right? Or, like, close enough that we can hear it, but far enough that it doesn't sound like someone's shooting at us. Yeah, exactly. And the area that you're currently in um, is known as the Rogue Valley because it's a massive valley. <laughs> uh, so mm -hmm. with all the mountain ranges and the large rock formation, there's a lot of areas where sound could easily be bouncing off of. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, but you all is that your people? Shots. Is that your people, Darby? Nope. Not every raider is mine. All my raiders are back home. For now. For now. I will look at Doc and just stop, look, look back. Look at Zenon. When he unwrapped it before, did it have a scope on his gun? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to take that uh, scope of yours, see if you can spot anything up ahead we need to worry about? Sounds good to me. And you said there's kind of like, this road is in a kind of valley? Yeah, it's basically, it... you're walking along um, basically the remnants of a massive interstate uh, that does go through the entirety of the Rogue Valley. So um, to either side of you, while it's it's fairly flat, there are definitely, you're surrounded by mountains and some hills. Is there any, like, uh, signs still standing that kind of get an overview on? Um, as far as signs go, um, there's, like, some speed limit signs. There's no, like, billboard or anything that can mm. get you, like, a higher vantage point, if that's what you're looking for. Then I'll just kind of move into somewhere where I can get advantage over whatever's on the freeway. You know, may I climb on to something. Uh, okay. You know, unsling my rifle and take a look down. Okay. If down only we had something tall <laughs> to stand on. Something really tall that you could stand on. Not gonna ask without perm <laughs> Not gonna go for without permission. You know? No worries. I just uh, met so these folk. Uh, I will say you do see kind of a jackknife semi truck, uh, kind of blocking the traffic that you could use a couple cars to climb up on the back trailer of. Um, Sounds perfect. Getting up on there, peeking through your scope. Um, go ahead, give me a survival perception check here, if you would. <laughs> That's uh, no successes. Uh oh. But thankfully. No 20s. 
Okay, if you want to spend any luck to re-roll any of those. <sighs> yeah, no, let's do it. This is a good chance. We'll sp I'll spend a luck for it. Okay. Oh, that's that's good. That's a that's a success. Okay, perfect. Um, as you're kind of peering through your scope and just kind of scanning the entirety of the area, uh, up ahead on the interstate itself, you don't see anything. Um, but as you kind of peer off to the right, where it's kind of more so just open fields between the interstate and the and the two rock formations, uh, you do make out the silhouette of what looks to be um, some kind of humanoid figure running away, and they kind of stop and turn around. And as they turn, you hear a shot go off. And you can see that what appears to be following them is what can be best described as a bear on steroids. Uh, this grizzly is just freaking massive. You can almost see like chunks of glowing green, green fur kind of sticking out of its skin um, as it is just rearing up and just slamming down towards this person. Uh, can I see, is this person wearing a blue jumpsuit? Or is it, you know, From the distance, a little you, far to see. you can't quite tell. You can just make just out a the silhouette. silhouette of a humanoid and some kind of giant-ass bear-looking creature attacking down on him. Kind of re-sling his rifle and slide down the, the semi. Well, let's see what those shots are. The poor fool is getting chased by a bear. A bear? <laughs> Tanya immediately grabs the super sledge off their back. <laughs> what? Tanya. Let's Gonna go. Gonna have to run a little ways. But we could probably make it there. Don't know if mm. man will still be alive, but we can make it. Off we go. Okay. Uh, so you see uh, Tanya a little more, and, and Doc. A little more hitch in Tanya's run right now. <laughs> All right, Tanya and Doc both begin running uh, in the direction that Zen is pointing them towards. Uh, Ruby, Darby, do the two of you follow, or what would you like to do? Are we helping that fella? I don't know. I want to kill a bear. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Might as well join him. Yeah, I'm, I'm blitzing. <laughs> well... We're getting left behind. We better start running after him. I'm already two feet run? ahead. Can your Brahmin run? Like, is it a... Look, the, the Brahmin's, Brahmin's at home! Yeah, oh, Bra you left the Brahmin Brahmin's safe at, uh, at, your, at your truck stop. Safe. You're cleaning safe. up the mess. If it leaves a mess anywhere, you're oh, going to oh, clean it up. Don't I ain't can't hear you from all the way out here at the front. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Uh, I'm old, I can't hear you. Booking it up there. Uh, Doc and Tanya, uh, you're the first ones to kind of be in closing the gap on this, on what's happening up here. Uh, and you see this individual turning. What They appear to just be holding just a basic like hunting rifle. Uh, and as you approach, you see the Yao Gui just kind of in its full form, standing probably about eight feet tall on its hind legs, just slammed down on this poor bastard out here. Uh, you hear the sounds of their Can I take a shot crunching. before? Uh, yeah, if you want to try to get a shot off as this thing reels back, I will absolutely allow. I will absolutely try to get a shot off. All right. How uh, far am, am I away from this thing now? Uh, I would say you're as you're kind of getting up close to the situation, you're probably about 40 feet or so from it. Okay. Um, I'm going to let uh, Doc fire off their shot. Two successes. Two successes. Excellent. Woo. Go ahead and give me your damage rolls here. So uh, one is awesome. one point, two is two points, three and four are misses, five and six are one point plus any weapon effect. Awesome. Give me just a sec. No worries. I like to think I right after those bullets fire off, like Tanya just lets out this like, ah, there you are type like thing. Just super shout. Ugh. One, three. Uh, one more time. One is one damage, two is two damage, and what? Three and four are nothing, basically misses. Five and six are one damage plus the weapon effect if there is any. Okay, cool. So that's three, four, three. Six damage and three of the weapon effect. Okay, what is your weapon effect? Oh, yeah. Piercing one. Piercing Ooh. one? Okay, excellent. Okay. All right. 
as this creature's reeling back, uh, Doc, you pull out your weapon. Uh, what does it look like as you're kind of running up, you see the situation? What, what does Doc's reaction look like for us here? So Doc is surprisingly spry for an old man. As soon as he pulls his weapon out, it's one smooth motion as if he's done it a hundred times before. He's down on one knee, sighted immediately, and just pop. And Tanya, you see that bullet just exiting out of Doc's barrel, just go almost like slow motion to you, just twisting through the air as this Yao Gui is up on its hind legs, and you see the bullet just pierce through into its side. And mm -hmm. for a moment, you see the eyes just kind of dart in your direction, but it immediately goes back slamming down on this poor fucker to where, Tanya, you can hear Damn it, the familiar sound of human bones just crunching <laughs> beneath this weight as this poor bastard gets slammed down into the dust and this uh, this massive bear's mouth just goes completely wide and just starts tearing into this individual. I'm... Tanya is still running as fast as they can. Okay. And perhaps with, cause running with, with Super Sludge in hand and then given the opportunity, lifts up the twirls and then just ignites the super sledge it just goes and then try to just like crack it like right into if because it's, it's on the it's um it's um chow down on this uh poor bastard right now right Correct. yeah as it's as its jaws locking down it kind of reels up and you see your opportunity right there uh before you see that split second before it fully notices you uh, where you can certainly get a hit off on it if you want uh, absolutely, I'm going to. <laughs> All right, give me, uh, give me your uh, melee plus strength here, if you would. Of course. That's a five and a two. Excellent. So yeah, those Go are successes. Give me that damage. So it's um okay, because it's six damage, or six dice, I should say. I'm sorry. Okay. So first okay. one uh, that rolled out. Okay. Effect. Okay, five damage to effect, and the effect is both breaking and because of the uh, big league's uh, ability, also gets vicious as well. God damn, okay. Uh, so, Tanya, what does it look like for us here? Uh, this, this, this bear's kind of reeling its head up. You ignite your super sledge. Uh, what, what does Tanya's face look like? What's Tanya feeling right now? <laughs> what's Tanya's mood? What's uh, what's the favorite thing they like to do on a, after a long summer night? You know, standard things. Turn ons, turn offs. Um, no, uh, Tanya is in sprinting as they're running. Their hand grip from like the base goes down to the bottom. To start doing the almost like a swing. Immediately, like starts to build momentum by pivoting their foot, uh, and then almost like turning around to where. Tanya is facing the group as they're running toward, and then immediately, as Tanya turns and looks at this, you know, just this shout, just ah! and then just this crack, um, with the with the momentum, almost like a three hundred sixty degree spin, and then just ah, Excellent. and just this, just shouting, just this ah, 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 feeling. And that's enough to definitely knock the Yao Gui off this individual. Uh, as you almost see a bit of its snout just kind of fracture and, and bend underneath the weight of your sledge as it hits. That's Tanya smiles. <laughs> and let's go ahead from there. Let's get everybody's initiative. Uh, so. Uh, mine is a 12. 12 for Tanya, okay. 13. Just a reminder is that perception and agility? Uh, whichever is higher for you, I believe. 13. Oh. Is, is, is it both of them? Both or? of them. Uh, okay. So I, uh, I thought it was like, sorry. No, 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 I apologize. Sorry. 17. 17, okay. Wait, you said it's perception and agility? No, I believe it's perception or agility. Perception or agility. It's your perception plus it's plus oh it is plus okay perfect plus yeah it's it's oh. the, it's always the same he never has okay to okay hold on i'm bad at math give me a second <laughs> yeah i'm i'm still at 12. 14. 14, for Darby. 14. Yeah. let me change that ruby with a 12. okay that's right 
and yeah, Pond. perception plus agility, and it's always the same. We'll never and until you level up, it it, it never changes, and that's only if you or um, dump points into it. So it's always that. So we'll always have the same, the same, uh, unless we level up. Perfect. I did math wrong. It was 14. 14 for nothing. Okay. Perfect. See, I did the math wrong too. <laughs> All good. That's All why good. I looked again. Okay. Uh, Zenon, you are the first one up. All right. Uh, kind of looking out to a, his traveling companions going up and, well, striking first. Uh, Zenon is going to kind of set up shop, you know, Lay his right rifle off his shoulder onto a hood of maybe a car or something, kind of looking down the way. Takes a, a cap out of his uh, one of his pouches, just sets it, balances it on top of the scope, and uh, just takes a deep breath in, scopes in on this, uh, this creature, and uh, it's going to shoot towards its face. Okay. You know, aiming for its that, head. Give me that attack roll. And uh, because. Uh, the sniper, I don't have the extra difficulty for aiming a specific location. And um, that's going to be uh, three successes. Three successes. Oh, Excellent. yeah. Excellent. Give me that damage if you would. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Ooh. Uh... That's going to be six damage and three effects of piercing three. Piercing three, good lord. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just check one thing here uh, very Wait. quickly. Seven damage, sorry. Seven damage, okay, perfect. No worries. Uh, all right. Excellent. That goes through, and with that, this thing's and already looking As he rough. takes that shot, yeah. and uh, <laughs> it's just kind of picks up the brass, puts it away in a in the pocket, and takes that cap back, back and kind of adjusts something with his, his scope and puts the cap back down, back on. Excellent. And as you're putting that cap back on, you see. This creature, as it kind of reels back from the shot, uh, you can just see there is just nothing but rage and anger in this thing's face as it now turns. And Tanya, you're the closest thing uh, to this creature. Wrestling! Wrestling! So, let's go ahead and let's do this. what we got. Wrestle uh, a bear is. session one. I'm, I'm, about, I'm about to German suplex a bear is That's what's about to happen. <laughs> two successes on the attack. Uh, are you sure? Can, you, can you check again? I just did the math, and surprisingly, yes, we are good. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be you. Sorry, he gets to roll a lot of dice. That's fine. I'm also just making sure. I'm just looking for a few things for me as well. So, okay, uh, that is going to be uh, nine points of physical damage. Uh, let me All roll. right, and uh, because of my barbarian ability, I get a plus three physical damage resistance. So would it be only six? Correct. Yep. Plus. Um... No plus. No. No. Yeah. No plus. It's good for you. Uh, do you have any def any physical defense on your right arm? Uh, no. No. Okay. So yeah, just the six point thunder damage to you. As is, yeah. Uh, good. did you take adamantium skeleton? Um, I can tell you, I did not. If you get five points or more uh, damage to any specific body part, you you get a you inflict a wound. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. No. Rip that arm off. At least it wasn't Rip your head. At least you're not concussed. Oh, no, you know, it's not too, too bad, right? Hopefully it didn't break. Is his arm broken? What happened? What happened? Was that your swinging arm? Was that your sledgehammer? Um, Are you left-handed? Are I'll, you left-handed? I would think that Tanya's ambidextrous, but you know, we'll see what happens. 
androgynous, to, to, ambidextrous. To, to, to be honest, um, it would probably would would be their swinging arm as their right arm, more okay. than likely. That's good. That's good. It's perfect. That's exactly. It's okay. What we we got you. You're big guns. Uh, well, that's so, fine. Yeah, as as the Yagwe kind of crunches down onto your right arm and you it, it pierces you almost right to where the elbow connects to the forearm and just yanks hard to where nice. you definitely feel it something disconnect uh, okay in there uh, crack however, I... <laughs> that is its go uh with that we are on to darby and doc you have the same initiative i will let you decide who acts first oh. the stock is closer and jumped into it. All right. Uh, take another shot with the rifle. Go for it. Two successes. Two successes. Excellent. Roll me that damage if you would be so kind. And that's the damage on the weapon's damage, right? Correct. So that's five damage and three effects. Okay, excellent. And what was the effect again? Piercing one. Piercing one. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Darby, over to you. So I think I was I was preparing to blitz, like I was going to run in and swing at this thing with my bat. Uh, <laughs> but after seeing Tanya uh, nearly lose an arm, just from one attack from this thing i kind of skid to a stop <laughs> um and i'll pull Fair. out my pipe gun instead and um shoot at it i i have the ability center mass uh which allows me to uh, strike a target's torso location okay perfect. uh without increasing the difficulty okay excellent. um so uh give me a uh give me an attack roll here so it's going to be um oh my goodness small arms plus perception Okay. Small arms plus perception. Small guns, so per right. uh same difference. Four Perfect. plus five, so that's nine. Um that's a two and a one. Oh, a critical success. Excellent. Uh give me I've that. never been so excited to see a one in my life as a D, &D <laughs> player. That's so I was like, that's a one! <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love it. Uh, give me that damage roll here if you would. Okay, so I roll, I apologize, so unfamiliar with it. So roll uh, 2d6 um, normally, but do I do anything special for a crit or? Uh, yes. Uh, April, if you know off the top of your head. No, uh, no, it, it just generates action points. Oh, that's all oh okay. okay. Uh, a critical success, uh, you gen it counts as two successes. So a nat one, that's you automatically right. get two successes. And then if uh -huh. it's at, if you have a tag skill and it's at or below your tag skill number, that's also like a critical success. Got so it. yeah, it, it, you don't do any extra damage okay. or anything. We just so, it just generates action points, but we're already full. So you have three successes right now. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So I just rolled two d six, right? Correct. Yep. If that's the damage on your pistol, yep. Well, it's a it's got a rate two, so I want to make sure is that three d six or if it has a fire rate of two, then you uh -huh. can uh, then you can add a d six to each rate of fire, but you also have to burn that ammunition. Oh, that's fine. So so you can roll four d six instead okay. of two d six if you'd like, and just Thank make you. sure to mark the ammunition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> so I've got two sixes and two threes. Okay, so two misses, but two points with the sixes. And are there any effects of your pistol? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, perfect. So it's still two it's, points. It's it's shitty. Um, no worries. It's still damage. Yeah, uh, and to the to the torso. To the torso specifically. Okay. Perfect. Uh, Tanya and Ruby, we are over to the both of you uh, now. Tanya, which arm were you holding your super sledge in? Well, was both. But now I got pinned down. I imagine that the with this my my right arm. He said right arm, right? Correct. Um, <clears throat> primarily they would have been holding it in the right hand. Okay. So uh, it is now right. on the ground in front of you. Yeah, kind of assumed. 
But the actions um, are you or Ruby, whoever wants to go first. Ruby. Okay, uh, so am I entering the scene in the same zone? Oh yeah, you can go flying up, uh, getting as close as you want to. Okay, cool. So if I'm in the same zone, uh, I'm going to use aim as my minor action, and then I am going to, um, you know what? We're going to aim it right at their torso with uh, one of my one of my flamer arms. All right, go for it. That will be. What's my target number? Oops. Hmm. Oh yeah, um, that's gonna be two successes. Okay, perfect. Uh, then that's gonna be I've got a perk that I can re-roll three of these, so I'm going to re-roll three of my damage die. That was a good option. Um, that's gonna be two, four, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, ten energy damage because I got vicious and I rolled one effect. So ten en energy damage. So I'm like, only you can prevent forest fires, and I'm gonna blast it right in its torso uh, for ten energy energy damage. And as you blast this right in the torso, uh, Tanya, you feel the heat coming off of uh, Ruby's <laughs> flamer fuel. Uh, as it kind of ignites this this creature right in front of you, and the heat just kind of waves over you like a like a rushing wave, uh, and you feel its jaw kind of go limp on your arm, and you see it just kind of collapse down onto its side on the ground. <sighs> right. Um. Okay. Good to know. It's gone. We hold a funeral. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Vikings funeral. Yeah. For the bear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. And then hmm. um, Tanya just for me goes, Ah, oh. Doc. I'll take a look. Doc. And um, Tanya sits up <clears throat> and just shows, like, I'd imagine. Is there like a hole through my through my arm right now? Oh, there's there's like four massive pierced holes through your forearm from where this thing's fanged. Can I... it's, it's massive canines bit into you. Can, can Tony do one of these? Like, uh, I can still they're, see. They're not quite that big to see. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> not not cartoonish or comical. No, no, okay, no. I got it. All right. <laughs> one still, success on a medicine check. Massive All right. creature. So. Um. It's so a one success on a medicine check. One success on a medicine check. Okay. Nice. Uh, Doc, uh, you go over and you start to patch up Tanya's arm. Uh, Tanya, you're definitely in a significant amount of pain. Uh, eh, but Tanya, it's fine. Uh, but Doc is able to slow the bleeding on it. I see. Even better. Is it bad enough that I should use a stim pack? What's your medicine rank? Un. Woo! You healed it. You healed her for one HP. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's why he's called or, Doc. <laughs> or you treated, or you treated her injury. You either healed her for one HP or treated her injury. That one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. And then immediately, better. just like, uh, like it's almost like on the count of three, we'll reset the bone. Yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what he does. All and, right, Tom. And I was like, ah. All right. <laughs> All right. I uh, go and okay. I stand up, grab my s s super sledge, and put it back on my back, <laughs> and immediately go look at the crunched. Oh, I'm already thing. I'm already wrist deep in the pockets, feeling around for this this person's belongings. I wanted you to say chest cavity, but you know that's fine that too. too. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought you were going to say too. <laughs> to the remains of this individual. Um, and as you're kind of looking at what remains of their squished being, uh, mm -hmm. you don't see any pockets at all. This individual Must be a woman. is wearing. <laughs> Sorry. What Where's the to purse? Be a <laughs> single piece jumpsuit. 
uh, Shit. in light blue Blue with these yellow accents to it. Uh, You can see that on the the lapel is a small um, uh, emblazoned symbol uh, of 93. Well, there's uh, now two confirmed people of the vault. What about its arm? Uh, if you're looking at the arm of this individual, uh, there was something on the forearm of it that is now smashed into bits and pieces as you're looking down into the soil. Uh, you see remnants of uh, what looks to be like a metal casing, um, a broken and very much cracked screen, and some various wiring and computer chips just kind of tucked into the soil. Ah. Can Doc get it off and start fiddling with it, trying to put it back together? Uh, you may certainly try. I will make the attempt. Okay. Uh, with this, Doc, you pull the remnants of this. Uh, two successes. Okay. Uh, as you're kind of pulling this thing off um, and kind of lifting it up. You see that the case itself kind of like barely dangles apart and almost starts to like pull into two pieces and fall to the ground. Uh, even with your successes as you're looking at this thing, it's pretty well beyond repair at this point. You would have to really spend a lot of time at a workbench with it to try to fully piece it back together. That's all right. Find something, gather up the pieces. Might be able to put it back together later. All right. Is uh, the uh... The person's firearm laying around somewhere that they were using to try to fight off this. Yeah, the, you do see a basic hunting rifle just kind of laying there in the soil. Uh, kind of strip it for for <laughs> ammo and. Okay. Everyone just—it's such—it's such an apocalypse thing to do. Where it's just like, <laughs> yep. Anyway, <laughs> just start stripping <laughs> them for parts. Is. Just like. Pulling I tried off to their pants and, and throwing it, it over his shoulder, you know. <laughs> now we move on to the next part. Uh, digging through, scavenging what you can uh, off this individual. Um, if you want to try to butcher the Yagwe, you certainly may. Uh, to pull some I will thought you were going to say the person. <laughs> it is already, already cooked. Tanya, ha- <laughs> Tanya has standards. Uh, oh. <laughs> but it is at this point that we will go ahead and call it for tonight. Uh, when we come back in two weeks, we'll pick back up with you all in the wastes on the way to the Family Fun Center to continue your investigations. Uh, so thank you all so, so much for sticking with us through uh, our first part here. Uh, to all of our wonderful raiders, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, before we go, uh, I want to just shout out our wonderful sponsors of the channel really quick, and then uh, we'll go around and give everybody a chance to plug yourselves. Um, so just a wonderful thank you to our fantastic friends and sponsors of the channel, starting off with Session Zero Clothing. Uh, they create some really cool TTRPG-inspired streetwear. If you use code ORDER at the checkout, you can get 15% off your purchase through their website, Session Zero Clothing. Check them out. Uh, next up, we've got an amazing slew of different dice crafters. Uh, starting off with Norse Foundry. They create some really cool artisan stone and metal dice. Uh, if you use the code TIO followed by the numbers 15 at checkout, you can get 15% off a, off your purchase through them. All these codes will also be floating around down in the chat as well. Uh, next up, we've got uh, our friends over at Mithril Armory. Uh, they created the really cool uh, Tin 20, the little Tin Puzzle 20. You pop it out, pull it up yourself. It's super, super cool. Uh, it looks like Justin might be pulling one out right now. Uh, it's literally the size of a credit card that you fold and make yourself. There it is. It is super, super cool. Uh, so if you use code INITIATIVE, you can get 10% off your purchase through them. It's Mithril Armory. Check them out. And finally, our very own Terran, one of our OG Wastelanders, uh, a.k.a. Valruk, a.k.a. the creator of Umbral Oculus Dice. Uh, she makes some absolutely fantastic, beautiful handmade dice sets. They are cursed for GMs, but wonderful for players. Uh, I've got a couple sets. They are fantastic. I absolutely love them. Uh, if you use code INITIATIVE, you can get 10% off a full set of dice from her store, Umbral Oculus. Check that out. It's super, super cool. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and throw it back to our players. Let's go in reverse order this time. Uh, start off with Rose, please. 
Hi, so I've been Rose, also known as Ghost Adventures, on Twitter and on Twitch. That's Ghost Adventures with a Q, not a G. I'm still not Zach Baggins. Um, I have been playing Darby tonight. Um, if you want to see me play other people, I do that sometimes. Specifically, this Saturday, we are going to be playing a big charity game over at Praetor's Rejects, along with Lord Gasamba and all of those people. Um, and so if you want to go see me play a bird as a barbarian uh, that's gonna be fun we're gonna be like that this weekend uh saturday night over on praetor's rejects um other than that i also play at pluto cleric's uh channel on sunday nights uh pluto cleric is a known dm here mm -hmm. at the initiative order and uh we're we're doing our session two of a starfinder campaign where i play a moth bard basically so like i'm all over the place doing all sorts of things Go check it out. Super awesome. Yes, we uh, we love both Lord Gasumba and Pluto. Both fantastic individuals and incredibly talented game masters. So by all means, check them out. And of course, you get to see Rose at the table. Amazing player. Uh, thank you so much. Let's throw over to Logan. Hello, my name is Logan. I have been Doc Hawthorne tonight. And I can be found streaming for the Initiative Order every once in a while. I can be found at Akichiwe on instagram and twitter and i've got some exciting things coming up that i can't talk about just yet so stay tuned excellent thank you so much uh let's throw it over to justin hey guys i'm justin i uh was playing zen and jones tonight and maybe you'll learn more about him next time uh i run a tiny little instagram page called tales of d and Dr dreams and i write stories and uh, a bit of poetry that just kind of comes to my head. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, let's throw over to Jake. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this chaos uh, thing of Tanya was played by me, Jake, also known as the Rizzo GP over on Instagram.com and on Twitch. Uh, we usually stream on Twitch uh, during the weekends in the morning, sometimes um, Monday and Wednesday evenings, uh, everything from EverQuest, EverQuest P99, and just other miscellaneous uh, stuff. Also working on doing voiceover work. Um, for those who are follow the channel, um, the I was able to do the introduction for the first season of Symborum. Symborum? Symborum? I always say it wrong all the time. Um, and too, super... <laughs> And um, uh, the main thing I guess I'd say looking forward to is um, we're going to be starting our push for Extra Life uh, for charity uh, this year. Probably within the next month. We did over $3,000 last year. The goal now is to do $4,000. And if we can hit that goal down the road, there will be a time where we play a game where i got to concentrate while also having hot sauce, um, hot sauce samples and having those muscle electrodes attached to an arm while I'm trying to play a game. Look forward to that. <laughs> but um yeah mainly uh find me instagram twitter and twitch all under the rizzo gp this is super fun i'm looking forward to two weeks super happy to have you here thank you so much uh and last but certainly not least our og overseer uh who again super grateful to have to help us walk through the system thank you so much april uh april all right uh yes my name is april hill you can find me at stiletto stiletto underscore assassin on instagram and TikTok and Stiletto DM on Twitter. I am also the community manager for Modifius. So if you liked you liked this Fallout 2D20 game that we are playing, or perhaps Star Trek Adventures or Dune or any of the other various games that we have, um, go follow us because we make a lot of really cool stuff. I'm also a professional dungeon master, voice actor, do all the things. So just follow me on this stuff and then yeah, hopefully we can chat and hang out and play. Because I like to play with people. Absolutely. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, as for myself, I am Nate Reidenauer, uh, the overseer for this miniseries. Uh, I am also the regular game master for Symbarum, which runs every other Sunday. Sunday, that's the word. Uh, that's the day. Uh, every other Sunday, 1230 Pacific Standard Time, uh, with another amazing group of players. Uh, super grateful to be running for them. Uh, Dark Fantasy D20 system, really, really cool. Lots of fun. Uh, so check that out if you want to. Um, and if you're interested in playing with us, hanging out with us, uh, jumping into some of our streams, please, please, please feel free to jump into our Discord. There will be a link going down in the chat. 
Uh, we run free-to-play community games uh, for those who want to just meet different game masters, try out different systems, uh, and just have a good time with like-minded geeks and just have fun. Please do. Uh, we also have uh, a couple open calls. Well, actually, I think just one right now for our upcoming Mythical Melee stream, uh, which is put on by our fantastic friends uh, over at Dragon Rock RPG Design, uh, Daniel and Renee, two fantastically talented creators, uh, where basically... They take these amazing fandoms, build stats for the characters, and then let players fight it out as those characters in a massive PvP arena. Uh, they're always super, super fun. Uh, I think the next one is Street Fighter uh, that we have an mm -hmm. open call for right now. So if you're interested in being in a Street Fighter PvP type battle, jump on our Discord, follow our socials. Uh, you'll find the open calls through those channels. Um, I think that's everything I've got. Uh, just thank you so, so much to all of my fantastic players. Thank you to our wonderful viewers tonight uh, for all the raids and all the support. We truly, truly love you all and appreciate you all. Um, stick around. I think we are going to go try to raid our friends over at Nat20 Productions next as well. Uh, but until next time, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, be kind to yourselves. And we'll see you all in the next adventure. Good night. Tanya. <laughs> Shouldn't <I> be without <laughs>